A new study found that grip strength is inversely correlated with biologic aging. Let's dive into these details because I think this is so incredibly fascinating, especially because as people get older, they generally underemphasize strength-based training and focus on aerobic training. But as this new study found, strength is inversely correlated with the rate of biologic aging. Let's dive into the details here. Again, the title of this paper is Grip Strength is Inversely Associated with DNA Methylation Age Acceleration. And this is drawing off data from the Dunedin study that we've talked a lot about. This is an ongoing study. It's now 40 years old out of New Zealand. And again, incredibly fascinating results. I'll just share with you figure one that really helps to tell the story here. If you look at chronologic age, remember there's a mismatch. You know, I'm 41 years old. My biologic age could be 35 or it could be 47. It just depends on my lifestyle, my environment, my nutrition, my sleep, my protein intake, and my training, which we're going to talk about the importance of training here. But you can see here, the scientists found looking at, I believe it was 40,000 people looking at this ongoing study of folks uh, out of New Zealand and found a strong association with grip strength and a slowing of the biologic age acceleration. And in, in contrast, they also found low grip strength was linked with an increased acceleration of biologic age. And again, this is so important because many people say, oh, I'm, I'm 40, uh, I'm over the hill now. And, and that just having that mindset is not good. Per, a negative perception of how you are aging is linked with accelerated aging. I think it's really important because the scientists say that grip strength is a clinically relevant biomarker of aging. We also know other clinically relevant biomarkers of aging, and these are these epigenetic age tests as well. But these are pretty boutique -y. Not everyone has access to a five or $600 test to look at their methylation patterns uh, within their white blood cells. And so I think if we can triangulate and look at strength and look at grip strength, this is a more attainable biomarker that, that many clinicians and possibly you would have access to. The uh, dynameters that we've talked about, they're available on Amazon. We've reviewed one before. I mean, this is something that you can do right here in your house or at home for $39. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't at one point test your DNA, age, but this is accessible. And so if there is a correlation with low grip strength for your age and acceleration of biologic age, we should all know about it. And that's why these scientists are trying to disentangle this. And I think it's really important that, um, that we all know this information. So the scientists say there's a large body of evidence linking muscular weakness as determined by low grip strength to a host of negative age-related health outcomes, including diabetes, physical disability, cognitive decline, including Alzheimer's and dementia, and early all-cause mortality. Given these findings, grip strength has been labeled a biomarker of aging. Really important. Now, as Sean Baker has talked about, we did several videos with him in 2022. There's nothing really fancy about grip strength. It's just easy to replicate in a clinical situation. We're talking about overall strength, and it turns out that grip strength is just a way to approximate whole body strength. For example, if you have really low grip strength, you probably have weak, weak leg muscles and core muscles and upper body muscles. And so there's nothing, again, fancy about grip strength. I don't necessarily suggest that you train specifically for grip strength train for whole body strength. And as a side benefit of that, your grip strength will increase. Now, the scientists say a growth in research evidence documents that epigenetic phenomena, such as DNA methylation, known as the DNA, and there's other tests out there, are highly implicated in the development of disease and rate of biologic aging. Given that methylation profiles are thought to be modifiable by lifestyle and other environmental factors, it has been proposed that DNA methylation is a robust biologic aging clock, providing superior estimates of true biologic age over chronologic age. A number of epigenetic clock measures have been generated for measuring an individual's epigenetic age, and in particular to indicate accelerated or decelerated biologic aging as compared with chronologic chronologic age. Again, just because you're 40, just because you're 50, it doesn't really matter. You should really care about your biologic age. And so there are a bunch of different companies out there. We'll do a review on the different options available. Several years ago, we reviewed the MyDNA age and I shared those results with you here. I will link that below. I think I was 18 months older biologically at the time than I was chronologically, which was quite interesting. We talked a little bit more about that. But Again, the scientists are trying to figure out if there is an association between grip strength and biologic age. And we're gonna dive into these findings because they are incredibly fascinating. So friends, I first wanna thank this video show sponsor, bondcharge.com, the makers of one of the lowest EMF sauna blanket on the market. This gets up to 170 degrees, which is much hotter than many of the at-home infrared saunas out there. It's portable, it gets really hot, and it's easy to use and clean, and you can use it in the smallest of living spaces. This is a great way to recover from your exercise sessions, improve cardiovascular 
cardiovascular health, endothelial function, and get into a calm, relaxed state before you go to bed. So you can save on this amazing tool by going to bondcharge.com forward slash H-I-H. Again, this is the lowest EMF and hottest sauna blanket on the market. You can save by going to bondcharge.com forward slash H-I-H. So going back to what the scientists found, again, this is incredibly interesting, incredibly fascinating, something we should all care about. The scientists used a longitudinal panel study from the Health and Retirement Study known as the HRS cohort to determine the cross-sectional and longitudinal association between muscle strength and DNA methylation patterns to look at biologic age and age acceleration of more than 43,000 adults aged 51 and older here in the US. Now, although there are 13 different epigenetic clocks that are out there in the medical literature, this study just looked at three. They looked at the pheno age, the grim age, and the dundin poam. And that actually looks at the age acceleration. So what's interesting about the pheno age and the grim age, which you can go out and test, you know, you can Google these grim age or, or pheno age and even the Dundin Poam. And there's different companies that will aggregate some of these or use one of these individually that are out there that, that I think are really interesting. But the um, Dundin study that we've talked about before, they've developed their own algorithm to look at the pace of aging. And I think that's what's unique. So you can get your biologic age measured and see how that corroborates with your chronologic age. And then you can look at the rate at which you are aging, which I think is quite interesting. So they looked at those different three, and they also looked at grip strength using a dynameter from a company in Denmark, and participants were just simply instructed to squeeze the device with maximal effort, and they did that several times and just let it go. And again, what they were doing here is ascertaining what is the correlation with low grip strength or high grip strength and the association with pace of aging, as well as epigenetic age, and here is what they found. The principal finding of the current study is that among middle-aged and older men and women, lower grip strength was associated with DNA aging acceleration across several different clocks. These results suggest that DNA methylation pattern clocks examined in the study represent clinically useful biomarkers of age acceleration. They say in the cross-sectional analysis, stronger grip strength was inversely associated with DNA methylation in all three biologic clocks that they analyzed. Now, you might be wondering, why might this be? Why is there this association with low grip strength and increased age acceleration? Well, the scientists postulate and draw upon a previous dossier of research as to why this might be. They say, as a biomarker of aging, the specific mechanisms underlying the observed correlations between lower grip strength and negative health outcomes remain unclear. DNA methylation patterns may be one of the pathophysiologic pathways by which grip strength and morbidity are related. There's growing consensus that the low-grade chronic inflammation known as inflammaging, this is a real word, I'm not making this up, is a highly significant risk factor for both morbidity and mortality in elderly people and may represent a strong mechanism linking age-related increases in adiposity and metabolic dysregulation with sarcopenia and muscle weakness. Let's pause there. We know that as, as you become deconditioned and unfit and more metabolically unhealthy, you increase your inflammation and you reduce insulin sensitivity, which is so important for preserving muscle mass. There's a strong connection between insulin resistance and loss of muscle and fat gain and loss of bone as well. It's a triad known as osteosarcopenic obesity. We've talked about it very extensively, but I think a lot of people don't make this connection, this critically important connection between metabolic health and muscle loss and fat gain. So I just wanted to underscore this important point. If you are deconditioned, if you are out of shape, if you are overweight, you are accelerating your biologic age. And we really need to focus on the soup and nuts here, which is getting back to becoming more conditioned, metabolically healthy. Indeed, we have previously shown that chronic inflammation was associated with lower grip strength in both men and women and also emerged as a significant causal mediator between lower grip strength and both incident disability and chronic disease multimorbidity. We have also previously demonstrated that muscle weakness and testosterone deficiency were highly correlated and independently associated with multiple morbidity in young and older men, which is important to acknowledge that hormones play a very important role in both men and women. Women tend to suffer from testosterone insufficiency after menopause, as well as DHEA insufficiency, and for men as well, in their mid-30s and starting in their 40s, DHEA and testosterone start to decline. So hormone health is critically important and part and parcel with metabolic health. So we can't disentangle the importance of hormones here. I think it's important for people to balance sleep and micronutrients. We've talked about zinc. We've talked about using glandular extracts like bovine testicular extract. We've talked about all the different ways to optimize hormones and, and supporting the androgen precursors, menopause, and as well as men using DHEA in the evening time. 
Now, in conclusion here, the scientists say grip strength is a clinically relevant biomarker of aging, and there's potential for combining these different measurements using DNA methylation patterns paired with a physical element here, grip strength, as potential tools to look at, at biologic age acceleration and potential future risk for chronic disease, as well as functional decline before it occurs. You don't want to be that person that has ignored this message and ends up in an adult family home or an assisted nursing facility because you cannot wipe your own rear or you can't get out of bed. So you want to start prioritizing fitness and metabolic health now, friends. That is the take-home message. Strength matters. It's correlated with rate of aging. So if you're going to exercise, which I encourage all of you to do, prioritize resistance training and then do some cardio on top of that. Start to walk after meals, uh, ride your bike here and there and, and things like that. But when you go to exercise, focus. Focus on weightlifting and getting stronger. Try to get stronger or at least maintain your strength every single year. So that's it for this video, friends. I really hope you enjoyed this content. Check out our show sponsor, bondcharge.com and save on the lowest EMF but hottest sauna blanket in the description below. And we'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.